Hi, this is Dr. Mike Gilley. Today we are going to get amped by learning to locate and use a library database for quality research. This is part two in our information literacy instruction at Mountain Empire Community College. In part one of the MECC Information Literacy Instruction Tutorial, we learned how to use deep web search techniques to better search the internet. Today we will learn how to locate and use library databases from Wofford Library to continue our research for quality information on the economic impacts of climate change. We will start our search from the Mountain Empire Community College website. From here, we will scroll down to the Wampler Library website. Click on the library area and go to the Wampler Library homepage. At the Wampler Library homepage, you want to look under the tab for databases and digital resources. Then, under the tab for VCCS Research Resources, find VCCS Resources and click on the link. From the library e-resources, click on the blue tab for e-resources A through E, then find the e-resource known as EBSCOhost. EBSCOhost is a company that offers several electronic databases for library research. EBSCOhost gives us an offering of over 50 library databases on various subjects and disciplines. When we open the EBSCOhost site, we will scroll through the list and pick out some databases to search that are appropriate for our topic. In scrolling through the EBSCOhost database list, I found four databases that we can use for our research. The first one is Academic Search Complete. It is a comprehensive, scholarly, multidisciplinary, full-text database with peer-reviewed journals. The second database that I found is EconLit which gives us full text for over 600 journals of economics. The third database I found is Environment Complete, with full text for journals and monographs going back to 1888. And the fourth database I found is Green File, which offers scholarly, government, and general interest titles on aspects of human impact to the environment. I will click the box in front of these titles to select them for our search, then click on continue at the bottom of the list. This should bring up our search screen. You can see from the top that it included all four of the databases we selected. Below the list of databases, you can see the search boxes, which gives us choices of terms or phrases to enter in each of the three boxes. We also have a choice of the Boolean operators and or not in the drop-down boxes to the left of the search boxes. To the right of the search boxes, we can select a field from our choices of all text, author, title, subject terms, source, abstract, ISN, and ISBN numbers. 
we are given some search options to modify and expand our search query, such as Boolean phrase searching, finding all search terms, finding any search terms, and smart text searching. We can also apply related words search within full text of articles, and apply equivalent subjects. And we have options to limit our results by full text, scholarly peer-reviewed journals, specific publications, available references, publication date, and image quick view. Let's do our search. I am curious to see what we will retrieve. For our library database search, we typed economic impacts in the first search box as subject terms. We typed climate change or global warming or greenhouse effects in the second box, again as subject terms. And then we typed government in the third box as a source. We connected all three boxes with a Boolean operator AND. We used Boolean phrase modes and applied equivalent subjects to narrow and widen our research query. We limited our results to full text and scholarly peer-reviewed journals with available references. Let's see what we got. Okay, our search in these four databases netted us 49 results. You can see we have academic journal articles here at the top. Okay, and while we're here, let's talk about what scholarly peer-reviewed journals are. Journal articles are sim journals rather are similar to magazines. They have articles in them. However, journals have less ads in it than general interest magazines do. And the articles in it are typically limited to a specific discipline, say environmental science or economics. So those articles get in those journals by people in those fields of study writing articles on research that they're working on. And before they can be published in these journal, journals, they have to go through a review process. And the people that review these articles are actually people who are in those fields of study. They may teach in those fields of study, they may do research in those fields of study, and publish articles themselves. So when they review those articles for publication in a specific journal, they are looking for quality research. They are looking to see that the articles and books that the author used have been taking, taken from scholarly, re, peer-reviewed materials. They are also looking that the author of the article has credentials in those fields. So when you get an article from a scholarly peer-reviewed journal, you know you're getting good information. Because until those reviewers approve the publication of the article, 
that they are reviewing, it will not get published in that journal. So that's why it's important when you're doing quality research and you want to make sure, verify, that the da data that is being reported is high quality, it's been verified, it's been tested. You want to look for these scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Okay? So that's why we selected that. Now, let's look and see what we can find. So what we're going to do is look at a PDF full text of the first result we have listed in the articles that were retrieved. Okay, here's our first result from a peer-reviewed journal entitled Europe Countries, published in 2018 with an article 46 pages in length with photographs, maps, data tables, and explanations of the photographs, maps, and tables for a case study on rural settlements on peatlands which are burning due to climate change. The authors are Russian and work in a university and government department both in Moscow. The article is written in English and includes a conclusion of the study and references. After reading the article, should I decide to include this article in my research paper, I will need to cite the article. Now, I got all this information about this particular article from scrolling down through the article. All this information was given to me within this article. So, from that information, I'm able to judge the quality of the research that is being presented in this article and know that it is a good resource to use for my particular research paper. Okay, as you can see to the right side of the article, there are some tools where you can share the article to a Google Drive, print the article, email the article, place the article in a folder, cite the article, export the article, create a permalink for the article, and share the article. This is another reason why I like the EBSCOhost databases. Most databases give you these tools, but they vary from one database to another. And the EBSCOhost databases and provide multidisciplinary databases with lots of journals and articles covered and you can also have access to these tools where you can share this information as well as cite your information. There are eight styles of citation for this article, American Medical Association, American Psychological Association, Chicago Turabian, Harvard Australian, Harvard Chicago Turabian Humanities, Modern Language Association, and Vancouver ICMJE. I'm going to use the APA citation. That's what I use in my field of study. So here is your APA citation. And yes, you can scroll across it, highlight it, then right click your mouse, copy it, and then you can paste it, the citation, in your reference area of your research paper. I think we have learned that the mathematical principles of Boolean operators and the order of operations with nesting can yield faster and quicker results in research using both the internet and library databases. The library databases ensure that you get good quality information and also gives you tools to make including that information in your paper easier with already constructed citations. 
I hope you will use these tools to make your research easier and more productive, yielding better results which are more relevant and authoritative. Good luck to you in your future research and scholastic endeavors. If you have questions or need additional assistance, you can email me at mgilly at mecc.edu or call me at 276-523-2400 extension 304. Or come by and see me at Wampler Library, room 222 on the second floor of Rob Hall at Mount Empire Community Thanks for watching and have great research results.